Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to use vector diagrams to calculate the resultant of two forces acting at an angle, and this is for higher tier students only. In the last video we started looking at resultant forces. Remember that when several forces act on an object, they could be replaced by a single force which has the same effect, and scientists call this single force the resultant force. We saw several examples where we calculated the resultant force. Now in all of these examples, the different forces are acting parallel to each other. But what if the forces are acting at an angle? I'm showing you a typical question here. Two forces are acting on an object. One force has a magnitude of 10 newtons, and the other force has a magnitude of 8 newtons. The angle between the two forces is 30 degrees. Calculate the resultant force. Now this looks much more difficult than it actually is. We start by making a scale drawing showing the forces involved. Scientists call this a vector diagram. We're going to say that one centimeter equals one newton. So here's the object, and remember that this is a free body diagram, so we just show a point. We now use a ruler to draw a 10 centimeter long arrow to represent the 10 newton force. Using a protractor, we measure an angle of 30 degrees, and here it is. And now we use a ruler to draw an 8 centimeter arrow to represent the 8 newton force. Now we need to create a parallelogram. To do that we copy the 8 centimeter line and position it at the head of the 10 centimeter force vector. We should also use a protractor to double check that the angle is still 30 degrees. Now we copy the 10 centimeter line and position it at the head of the 8 centimeter force vector. And then we draw a line from the tails of the force vectors to the other side of the parallelogram. Finally, we measure the length of the vector and work out the resultant force that this represents. In this case, the vector is 17.5 centimeters long. So this means that the resultant force is 17.5 newtons. We can also use a protractor to measure the angles, and here they are. Now in the exam, you need to draw your vector diagram as accurately as you can. However, the examiners will accept a small range of possible answers for the resultant force. Here's one for you to try. A force of 280 newtons and a force of 320 newtons are acting on an object. There's an angle of 20 degrees between the forces. Calculate the resultant force. Now to do this, you'll need to decide on a scale, for example, one centimeter for 40 newtons. You will then need to draw a vector diagram and work out the resultant force. So pause the video now and try this yourself. Okay, using a ruler, we draw the two vectors to scale. And again, I've used one centimeter equals 40 newtons. And using a protractor, we make the angle between them 20 degrees. Now we complete the parallelogram. And now we draw in the vector for the resultant force. This vector has a length of 14.8 centimeters. Remember that 1 centimeter equals 40 newtons, so the resultant force is 592 newtons. And once again, we can use a protractor to measure the angles, and here they are. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on using vector diagrams in my revision workbook. And you can get that by clicking on the link above.